welcome soil conservation and management students from the Royal University of Agriculture in Phnom Penh, Cambodia to our session 14 lecture series on GNSS and GIS. This is video lecture number, fifth, uh, number 5 where we're going to talk about GIS or Global Information Systems. Okay, And uh, in the previous lectures we've talked a bit about GNSS or GPS as it's called in the United States and now we want to talk about how that applies to global information systems okay and this here is a slide that kind of shows uh, GIS in a very simple format um, and I want to first though show you here on my screen on my my phone screen here and it's got somewhat of a glare to it so maybe you can't quite see what I'm trying to show here and Turn my camera and get some shade. Oh, all you're seeing is the sun there. But uh, hopefully what you can see is it's uh, Google Maps. And Google Maps is a GIS system. And there are many other mapping software or apps that you might have downloaded on your smartphone. They're, they're a GIS. Uh, they are a way that we, something that we use to find things, right? And so geographic information system is, is basically a digital map, a map that we have on our computer that we can click, you know, and you probably used Google Maps before. You, you open it up, you see a list of maybe restaurants or entertainment locations, and you, cl you, you click on them or touch them, and it pops up and gives you additional information. That's what a GIS does. It gives us both spatial data and what we call attribute. You can see that word right here, attribute data. That's information about that point. And so for example, you want to navigate to your favorite restaurant, or you want to find a restaurant to eat. Uh, you want to eat, for example, maybe you want to eat uh, a muksak tre, because a muksak tre is mentan. So that's what you want to eat. And so you get on Google Maps or on Apple or whatever, and you type in um, fish em up. And so you type it in, and it shows you several different restaurants on the map that you could go to, and you can click on that or touch that and it provides you information about that restaurant maybe how how it's rated is it a four out of five rating or a five out of five rating and how much it costs right they, get, they put those dollar signs right you'll see dollar signs next to it which are help you know if it's two dollar signs it's a little expensive three dollar signs it's more expensive five dollar signs very expensive right those that's all part of the attribute data the location data is it's X, Y, and Z. It's location, right, where it's located. It's longitude, latitude, and elevation. And so this is an example of maybe a, a same thing, but on a farm. So this is on a farm. And so what we've got here is we have some points. We have three points here, one there, one there, and one there, that are represented by a box or square. And they represent, that's the point, the location. You can see the geo-reference or the, the location here, location data, location S B and O, and you can see their X and their Y, their longitude and latitude position. But then we have that attribute data, right? We know the part, they are barns, right? Okay, they're clang or uh, rong, and 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 we know what they're for. This one's for hay, right? Or forage, and this one is to keep our equipment, our tractor and our plow. And another one is a dairy for cow, right? For cow. Okay. And then we have some lines. We have a line here. You see this line right here. And we have another line here. Now these lines are also part of that GPS or GIS system. We have the lines. And they're roads, right? They're roads. And uh, one road has got Gaussu on it, right? What we, in English we call paved, which means Gaussu. And uh, it's a, you know, when you say plug Gaussu, meaning it's, it's the same thing as a paved road. And then we have a field road, right? It's just got, it's just got, uh, it's not paved. It's just got soil and rock, just small. Okay. And then we have some areas. We have an area here, right? This green one, and then a blue, and then another green area here. And these are our fields. Okay. And we call that area. Okay. And so we have a field, and then we also have a lake out there. Okay. So. That is uh, one of the great things about a GIS is not only does it place it on the map, but it also has information about that point. That's extremely helpful in agriculture. Very helpful. And we'll talk about some examples in session 15 of how we do that. Now, 
Uh, this is an important one. This is the type of data. This is how the how these lines and polygons are created in a GIS system, and it's important to understand. This type of data is called vector data, vector data. You'll need to know that for the poll in class. In the quiz in class, we're going to identify uh, vector data. Okay, and so vector data is uh, points. It's, it's, it's points, and they, they have the coordinates of those points stored. And there are three types of vector data. There is points, lines, and polygons, and I want to describe how each of these work. A point is fairly simple. There's the point right there. There's a point, and we have the X and the Y location of that point. A line is going to be two or more points plus a connection, or think of that as a line. Connect those points. So as we look at this right here, we have a point here, one point one. We have point two, point three, and point four, and then we tell the computer to connect these. The connecting, that's why we call it a connection. But it's just drawing a line between them. And so now we have one line. Okay, makes it up. The next one is a polygon. A polygon is going to be three or more points that we connect and then close. What I mean by that is if we look over here, we have all these points in our polygon. So this is our polygon. Write that down here. This is our line example. We have all these points. You see these points along the way. Points. Okay. And then you can see that we are connecting them. So we connect these points with lines. Connect them. Connect them. And then we connect them. But at this point, all this means is we've made we've made one. We made a circle. We haven't closed it in. So this could be a road, right? A road that starts here, goes all the way around, and connects again. But we put a closure rule, which then makes this a polygon. It closes it in, closes it in. Okay? Makes it a polygon. Here's an example of this. This is uh, some exa an example of how this might be used. Uh, and this is an example of how I, uh, I find a Christmas tree in the forest. Okay. And so what I did here is I found I found areas that have Christmas trees. And they're the blue areas here. Okay. And then I have the roads. The roads in the forest. You can see the roads. And then I have the areas where I can park my car. And so then I I can look at the map here and I can say, okay, which of these areas is largest and where is the closest parking place and which road should I drive on to get there? Okay. And so this is a great example of how we use how we use GIS systems to ident to find information and things we want to do. Okay. Another type of data that we have, uh, this is again remember this is vector data. So this is an example of vector data. And I'm going to provide some examples that we do this in agriculture. Soil sampling, right? We're putting out points here wherever we soil sample. Okay? Or we're using it to, uh, to draw our roads and our fields that we farm. And these are all examples of how we do that. Okay? Another type of data is called raster data. In this case, raster is just a what we call a grid. Okay? A grid you can see here. And these individual components are called cells. Cells. And there's raster, by the way. Okay. And so um, what we do is we create this, and then and then we just say, okay, we give a value to each one of these cells. And that's that value can be whatever, but that's how it's working. Okay. Sometimes if we're thinking about a picture, like a root a picture. Think about a, a group top or picture, right? And it has pixels. You may have heard that term before. That's the same, pixels. Okay, so each cell holds a value. And actually, a picture is the perfect example of, of, a, of a, a raster data. Okay, we have some pictures of Angkor Wat here. Uh, this is called, this right here is LIDAR data. 
This one's LiDAR data, and it's they've created a digital elevation map off of this LiDAR data. So elevation. Uh, here's just some imagery. Here's an example of imagery from agriculture, right? We're identifying areas here where the where the, the crop is dark green and healthy, and areas where the, 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 the crop is light green and needs more nitrogen fertilizer. Okay. And so uh, satellite images and, and pictures that we take with drones, these are examples of vector data. And we can use these in a GIS too, help us make decisions about agriculture. Uh, so pick, taking a picture with a drone, we can look at the, the data in there and we can identify areas that, have, uh, that are low in nutrition or high in nutrition. Okay. Now, I realize that in these four or five slides, we tried to explain a geographic information system to you. They're very complicated systems, but extremely helpful in agriculture, especially in helping us cons in developing uh, conservation agricultural practices and making those conservation agri agricultural practices more effective. But it's also important to remember that we teach whole semester classes on GIS. And I encourage you, if you're interested in, in learning more about GIS and GPS, I encourage you to sign up or, or, or have a Le Creux or, uh, or one of your Le to, 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 to make room for you to go take a GIS class and learn more about it. Okay. But here's a review of some of the topics that we discussed. There's also some questions here that you can look at. And of course, when we present this in class, I would invite you to ask questions and learn more about the GIS and, G and GNSS. But that, that concludes this, our session 14 lecture series, including, including this uh, video lecture number five.